Shut up and sit down. Yo, what up OGs, Grover20Guide here and welcome back to Season 5 Continued. Today we are going to be brewing up some Root Assist Complete from Skunk Labs Horticulture. So what you're going to need for this how-to tutorial, you're going to need a gallon of distilled RO, any type of sterile water. You're going to need your Root Assist Complete or Root Assist from Skunk Labs Horticulture. You're going to need an air stone. In this case we're using a pump and quarter inch clear tubing for our air stone. We don't actually have the air stone adapter. Um, we didn't purchase it. It's just, uh, in my opinion, a waste of four to five dollars. You don't really need the air stone because all you need is the, the air moving through your tubing here to make your water turbulent and um, to help the brewing process of the tea. So let's get into how to brew your own root assist complete. We are going to be following the directions on how to brew our tea right off the bag here. You can also find the directions on Skunk Labs website. Use one brew bag per gallon of non-sterile water. Place clean air stone on high to keep the water turbulent and add 1.5 teaspoons of unsulfured molasses per gallon. And you guys can see below in that white little uh, paper there it actually says root assist complete raw sugar cane added. Do not add molasses per direction so we are not going to be adding the 1.5 teaspoons of unsulfured molasses. That is already comes with the, uh, the new updated Root Assist Complete. So after you brew, allow 48 hours for a proper brew while keeping temperatures within 68 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's bring up a converter really quick and get that converted over to a Celsius degrees. So 68 degrees Fahrenheit translates into 20 degrees Celsius and 82 degrees Fahrenheit translates into 27.8 degrees Celsius. If particles are visible, it's recommended for hydroponic to filter with a cheesecloth, t-shirt, or coffee filter. In my case, we are in a soil medium, so if we do have floaty particles, it doesn't matter. That's just going to be extra bacteria that we can use for our brew. Use immediate Use immediately or refrigerate up to 10 days. For general root health, use one ounce of tea for every gallon of nutrient water once every three days. So that kind of gets a little confusing because um, I know I know Skunk Labs products are meant for DWC growths. Now they also work in soil growths, which I just think is phenomenal. So in my case. Let's see, so you would add your one ounce per gallon every three days. So I'm assuming that's for a hydroponic row. You would add it into the top of your plant a little bit, maybe add it into your reservoir every three days. Um, with soil, our watering schedule is much different than a hydroponic watering schedule in a sense that we water, we let our soil aerate for a day or two, however long it takes to aerate. Then we come back in with a nutrient feeding or so so I'm thinking with every nutrient feeding, we are going to be feeding with our root assist complete as well. On our regular watering days, we're going to keep it regular watering days, and, um, and we'll see how that goes. Now this is my first time using root assist, so that is the plan of attack. We're going to incorporate our root assist complete on our nutrient feeding days and see what results we get from that. If we're going to change things up, we're definitely going to let you guys know in our updates for our season five continue. So let's get to brewing our root assist tea. We bumped into a minor problem. We have our one gallon container here of our distilled water. But if we move up here, you're able to see that there is no space of uh, air left up top. Our water actually goes all the way to the top there. And I do believe our Root Assist micro brew bags are a little bigger than the opening that's provided with this gallon container here. So I think what we are going to go ahead and do um, is we are going to open our distilled water now and we are going to dump out just a little bit because the directions for use say you want an entire gallon of sterile water. Now you can see our water line is just about right there. It doesn't give us any room to work with, so we are going to dump it out to about right here, 
we're gonna lose a little bit of water um, but then we're also going to cut off the top of our bottle here so we can fit our micro brew bag into our water container here. So we got the top of our gallon container cut off here and it's given us ample room to drop our brew bag in our gallon container here and work with it. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to go ahead and cut open our bag and take out a brew bag and I am extremely glad that we did cut the top because as you can see this definitely would not have fit in a normal gallon container so you do need to cut the top we did lose just a little bit of water but I'm hoping that it is not going to change anything with the brewing process so let's go ahead and actually put our brew bag back into here just for a second and let's break open our air stone also known as an air pump. So we got Hydro Farm active air pumps. Blah, blah, blah. We don't need that. We don't need you. All right, so this is all you need. Got our little pump here that we are going to be plugging in to create that turbulent water that we need to ensure that all that beneficial bacteria gets properly brewed up. Plug this in. Okay. And this thing's actually already blowing out air. It's already on. So we're going to take our quarter inch tubing here. Let's see. Eh, we could just cut the tubing. There we go. Stupid sticker didn't want to come off. That's okay, we'll just cut the whole thing. And we got our tubing here. We're actually just gonna go ahead and drop the end that we just cut right into that little cutoff handle there. Gave us a nice little uh, place to put our air stone. I'm gonna go ahead and connect this into our pump here. And you can see our water becoming turbulent as we speak. Now I hope it doesn't bubble over the edge, that would suck. Let's get this thing turned up to high. Oh, it's bubbling over the edge. Oh, <laughs> that's awful. All right, let's turn you down to low. All right, so we're gonna need to empty out a little more of that water, which really sucks because we are losing a little more of our gallon as we continue making this video. All right, so that didn't work as planned as the first time we had a volcano spew out of our water container here. We did have to empty even more water out of our gallon container, which um, probably isn't the best choice. So if you guys are making this alongside at home, I hope you guys aren't doing what I'm doing. I hope you guys have chose to put your sterile water in another source of a container, maybe a larger bucket or something. I didn't have a larger container on hand right now, or that's what we would be doing. So we're gonna go ahead and re insert our air stone into our jug here make sure that puppy's all the way at the bottom there because you want it turbulating from all the way at the very bottom up and then we're gonna go ahead and turn it up once again hopefully we get no explosion this time all looks good water's moving nothing spewing out so it looks like we can continue with this tutorial. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to take our root assist micro brew bag here and we are going to drop it in to our one gallon. It's a little less than one gallon sterile water now but when we drop this in we're not just going to drop it in and let it sit there with the pantyhose. You want to make sure that you are kind of working out all of your tea or your brew, I should say. Just making sure you're working it out of the pantyhose there. Now you guys might see that this is a little darker blend um, than what you're working with at home. That's because we did lose some water there. So like I said, I hope this doesn't affect the brew. I might be able to go in later on and just add the little bit of water that we did miss. Um, but I'm probably just not even going to mess with that. I'm just going to just go with what we have here and um, 
and on our next brew definitely do things properly here so we've been working the pantyhoe for a while now <laughs> we're just gonna go ahead and drop her in there now and just like that we have finished brewing up our own root assist complete from skunk labs horticulture I have to say that was extremely quick and easy and really simplifies the whole process of brewing beneficial bacteria and teas and making your own at home just a really easy process. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to leave our tea brewing just like this as is for 48 hours, two days, and in two days we will be back to check up on our tea here and we're going to be measuring it out and, um, and actually incorporating it into our feeding regimen. Now, for storage, once this is done brewing, so after 48 hours, we're gonna come back in here, we're gonna measure out our nutrient regimen, our one ounce per gallon of nutrient water, feed our plants, and then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna store our root assist in the refrigerator up to 10 days. Now, if you're using hydroponics, be sure to visually examine the liquid for any particles floating and filter if needed prior to using. The easiest and best items used to filter the tea could be uh, with a, a funnel and a coffee filter, a cheesecloth, or a t-shirt. You want to make sure that you don't have any of those chunks of bacteria um, going into your reservoir if you are a hydroponic or a DWC grower. Now if you stay on top of your, your reservoirs and you do a detailed cleaning, I guess it doesn't really matter, um, but you if you're kind of on the lazier side and you don't really clean your reservoir you want to make sure that you're filtering out those chunks of bacteria because it can cause for um, some later issues in your reservoir. Now you want to uh, use one ounce per gallon of nutrient water every three days for general maintenance. Pour a little over the crown of your plant and add the rest to your reservoir. That is if you're a hydroponic grower or a DWC grower. In my case I'm a soil grower. Soil is my main medium. I love soil growing. And so we don't need to worry about the floaty soil growers. We can just um, take our one ounce per gallon, add it to our nutrient gallon of water, and we can just feed right to our soil. We don't need to worry about filtering out our floaties. Also, for hydroponic application, you want to avoid anything organic in the nutrient water. This means extracts, vitamins, acids, and definitely no carbohydrates, aka your sugars. Organics feed brown slime algae as well as pyrethrium, aka root rot. So, just a heads up for all you DWC growers out there that, um, that you want no organics being fed alongside your root assist here because it can create or some root rot. So with that being said, OGs, that is how you brew up your own root assist complete from Skunk Labs Horticulture. Be sure to give this stuff a try and stay tuned into our Season 5 continued grow updates for a more in-depth review and analysis of the product once we start using it. So, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to comment and like. And as always, OG, smash that subscribe button because you definitely don't want to be missing out on future parts of Season 5 continued. I will see you guys in 48 hours to put this stuff in the refrigerator and to feed our plants.